Hello, everyone, and welcome to a precious moment. God bless you, and and I pray that you're having a blessed, blessed day. I want to tell you and just kind of present to you that the most important time that anybody can come to in their lives is when they can say to themselves, I want God or I want more of God. If you've never come to that place, then you ought to say, what is going on? I got to come to this place where the inside of me just says, I need more. I want more. That is the most important time in your life. And if you have never come to that place, I'm telling you, you've got to get there. You see, you know, when we want more of God, God is so good to us that he wants to give more. He wants to you to have more of him so that you can have more goodness of life and that you can have life everlasting because it is not promised for everybody. Everlasting something is promised, but not everlasting life. There is everlasting life and then there's everlasting torment. So it is appointed for man wants to die, but then you will, there is a life after death. So we know that we're going to die, but we know that we have to determine for ourselves what we want to do or where we want to live eternity. And that's important. So when you can come to a place where you say, I want, I want God. That is the most important thing. The second part is I want more of God. Because once you want more of God, then you can go on that beautiful journey. So I want to encourage you in that way. So see, how do I get more of God? Well, what do you have? We have men and women in the Bible that give us examples of, of how they obtain more of God, even when they didn't know that that's what their heart was saying. So we look at, at King David when he was just a little boy, and we can look at him very briefly. You guys just excuse me while I'm outside, just trying to maintain <laughs> Uh, we can look at him very briefly and we can say, look, when he was even a little boy, everything that he had was given to, given to God. And as a result, you can see his life just increased, increased with more, increased with more. Where did he get the more from? Because at the end of his life and, and his story, his, his memorial from the Lord was that he was a man after God's own heart. How is it that God was able to call him that because his life sang that out? So what is your life singing? Well, it's based on what you do with what you have. Well, for example, do you have time? What do you do with your time, especially your extra time? Do you devote it to the Lord? Are you thinking about what can happen in your day that that can be really pleasing to God when you sit there and you begin to meditate on things or just think about your day do you think about God do you think about what he wants you to do or how he led your day and how you can th do things differently according to his will do you have money what is it that you invest your money the most in is it your bills most of us would say yes but are there ways where we can adjust our, even our money to say, I want God first. I want to invest everything that I am in God. Do you have children? Well, most of the time we are raising our children up to make sure that they get good grades and make sure that they do good in our, in sports or in a, 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 a trade or in a talent. And we invest our money into that. And we invest our time and our free time. We spend our energy in after school activities and all of that. But but if we if we give a percentage of our even our energy and our and our children, our investment into our children, then is that unto the Lord? Well, how am I how am I to invest into my children and unto God? What about my marriage? How do I invest into that unto God? Because I need to know that if I'm saying I want more of God, then that means that what is in my hands, what I have right here, right now, if I have a car, how do I invest that into God? How do I bless God with my car? If I have a home, whether it's small or larger or in between, how is it that I can bless God with my home? Can I worship God in my home more? Can I invite people over to, to study the word together and to fellowship in God together? When I invite people to my home, is it blessing God or is it blessing our own souls? Is it to party? Is it to have fun? Is it to increase in ourselves first? 
It's good to have fun. Play games. Play Monopoly. Play whatever you want. Uno. But what what percentage of your housing, of your atmosphere, of your day, of your heart are you giving to the Lord? Because when you can say and get to that point to say, I want more of God. He's going to say, what is it that you've done with what I've given to you? And in that, and this is why it's such a precious moment, because God is so wonderful and precious to us. In that, we can then see, do you really want more of God? And when I can show God based on the how well I'm doing what he's given to me, then he is so good that he'll give me more. So we're going to go with that and we're going to watch God bless us as we follow him and obey him in that. In what we have, what do you have if you bless God with it? He's going to bless you with more.